It's our 500 subscriber special, and I know how to do what I'm told. Grand Theft Auto V won the community vote and is our game to analyze today, and it's an interesting one. Later on, I'm going to show you a good reason why we may never see story DLC in a GTA game again based on the data. But before we find out how it did, I need to take a moment to get serious. I've only been doing this YouTube stuff for a bit over half a year, and now we're at 33 videos in this series, and I really appreciate the support and feedback I've gotten from you. It means a lot, because I really do enjoy doing this, and I'm thrilled that it's finding an audience, like you, that enjoys content that is a bit more thoughtful and data-oriented than the usual hate-bait stuff out there. Not only have you given me support, but more importantly, you've given me some of your valuable time. Trust me, Old Bit isn't just a name, it's my age too, and as such, time means a lot more to me. I hurt down to my soul when I feel like I've wasted time in a game, or more importantly, if a game is actively wasting my time. Our time on this earth is finite. It's a precious currency, and I don't take the time that you've given me and my channel lightly. So thank you all for helping this channel hit 500 subs, and I look forward to many more milestones with you going forward. All right, let's not waste any more of your time. Let's find out if anyone actually played Grand Theft Auto V. Welcome everyone, I am Oldbit and this is Did Anyone Play? A series where we investigate, analyze, and determine the truth about how much gamers have truly played and completed video games. How do we do this? We use trophy and achievement milestones within games and then compare those results to our huge gaming database to evaluate and rank games compared to the rest of the industry. Using objective data and statistical comparisons, we can draw conclusions. We aren't reviewing games in a traditional sense. Our goal is to provide analysis that can be better used to understand player behavior while ignoring game sales and hype to ensure we see reality as it truly is. Remember that all percentages we'll be talking about here come from the total number of players that have launched and played the game for any period of time, so these results are a full reflection on how gamers actually play GTA V. Okay, a special note on GTA V, and this is a big one. We have a lot of releases for this game, and each one is unique. There were three releases of GTA V on PlayStation. One for PS3, one for PS4, and one for PS5. Xbox got the same treatment, one for 360, one for, well, the one, and one for the series, and a singular release for PC. So we have seven distinct platforms with different results to look at. There's a few ways to handle this, but today I'm going to focus the traditional analysis on each platform's initial release version. So we are going to see PS3 versus 360 versus Steam today when looking at our detailed milestone breakdown. Later on, we will dip into the generational differences with higher level views. First, it's game time. Let's play Better or Worse, where I give you three games and you have to guess if GTA V did better or worse for player completion compared to each of these games. I'll give the answers out a bit later in the video. So you can see the games GTA V is up against. We have Sonic Origins, Forza Motorsport, and Dead Island 2. So place your bets and good luck to you. As always, please hit that like button, and if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want more of these types of videos, and a quick spoiler warning as we may be talking about some elements of late game progression. So let's find out if anyone actually played GTA V on Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation. The first milestone that players will likely reach is called Welcome to Los Santos. This milestone is achieved once a player completes the second story mission called Franklin and Lamar. Here the player steals a car with Lamar, drives it through the city, escapes the cops, and ultimately delivers it to Simeon. How many players made it to this first early milestone? On Steam, 83.1% of players hit this milestone. PS3 had 83.4%, 360 had 77.3% of players do this. And while we see that GTA V starts off above the industry average, which is good, it's also important to point out that Steam and PS3 lost 16% of players right off the jump. 360 was worse with a 22% loss. Let's go to the graph. Here you can see visually that GTA V is off to a solid start, but perhaps not as strong as we might expect. Still, being above the industry average is always better than the alternative. So what kind of game is GTA V? Well, for those living under a rock since 2013, it's an action-adventure game and is the seventh main entry in the GTA series. It's set in the fictional world of San Andreas, and the story follows three protagonists, Michael, Franklin, and Trevor, as they try to commit heists while dealing with the government, law enforcement, and other criminals. It's an open world, and players can switch between the protagonists, both during and outside of missions. Nothing I can really say here will do the game justice, as it has some of the best realized open world and NPC AI in any game of this nature. The main story with some side missions can take around 44 hours to complete, and it was developed by Rockstar North and published by Rockstar Games. 
The release schedule is a bit messy, so here we go. GTA 5 originally released on 360 and PS3 in September of 2013. Then it was remastered and re-released on PS4 and Xbox One in November of 2014. Finally, the PC version released in April of 2015. Rockstar, not satisfied, re-released an enhanced version for PS5 and Xbox Series in March of 2022, nearly nine years after the original release date. The second milestone we've chosen is called a Friendship Resurrected. This is awarded after a player completes the 19th story mission called Fame or Shame, where the player has to save Michael's daughter from humiliation. How many players made it here? Steam has 39.8% of players achieving this, PS3 has 47.3%, and 360 has 48.9%. While this is a bit into the story, the drop cannot be ignored. Steam has lost the most players since the first milestone as they dropped 43% more. 360 held the best, losing 28% more players. And we can see that GTA 5 is now performing below the industry average on all platforms. It's a really big drop for sure, and it might indicate a quit moment for a lot of players. We'll have to see how the next milestone shape up to be sure. It's always good to understand the competition a game was up against when it launched. Try not to laugh when I say competition for GTA 5. So anyway, what was happening around September 17, 2013 in the gaming world? We see titles like FIFA 14, Diablo 3, and Armored Core Verdict Day came out around this time on the platforms. Looking at Google Trends here, we see that GTA 5 in blue was crushing everything at the time of release. Only FIFA could mount even a tiny effort. So it's clear that the hype was huge for GTA 5 and the competition was not a factor. We like to pick a mid-game marker for our third milestone. Here we have chosen a fair day's pay. Players can achieve this by completing the 38th story mission, where you have to shoot an engine of a jet and then follow that smoking aircraft trail on a motorcycle. How many players reached this milestone? Steam has 29.3% of players do this. PS3 had 34.3% and Xbox 360 had 37.4%. At this point, GTA 5 results are hovering around the industry average with Steam a bit lower and the consoles a bit higher. All platforms lost around 10% of players since the last milestone, so a bit of good and a bit of not great. The good is that only losing 10% at this point is really strong. That would indicate that there are less and less people quitting the game this deep into it, and you would expect that. The not so good thing is that a juggernaut of a game like GTA 5 really should be much higher than the industry average. It's not the end of the world, but you would expect a game with universal acclaim would not be producing average results. But there's still time for the data to improve. How did GTA 5 do with critics? I think you all know. Metacritic for PS3 rates it at 97 out of 100. Xbox 360 also had a 97, and PC received a 96. Don't ask me what that one point off was for. On Steam, users have rated it very positive recent and all time with over 1.6 million reviews. That's a lot of reviews. Open critic rating is a 92, with 92% of critics recommending it. I think we can say the reception was exceptionally strong for GTA 5. The most important milestone is our fourth one, and what we base our industry ranking on. It definitely shows how many players finished the game and truly played GTA 5. This milestone is called To Live or Die in Los Santos, and is awarded when a player completes the 69th story mission, which can be one of three choices. It will be the mission called The Third Way, something sensible, or the times come depending on what you choose. No matter the choice, this milestone will unlock when the mission chosen is completed. Where does GTA 5 end up on the different platforms? On Steam, 24% of players completed this milestone. For PS3, it was 28.8%, and on Xbox 360, it was 31.3% that finished this. This is the smallest drop yet for GTA 5. Now consider that from the last milestone to this one is nearly half of the mission count for the entire game, I think we can call this hold exceptional. And because of that exceptional hold, GTA 5 is ending up above the industry average. Xbox 360 is the best performing platform for GTA 5, with PS3 a close second. Now that we've reached the end of the game, we want to check the percentage of players that quit the game after making it through the first milestone but failing to reach game completion. Here, all platforms are doing better than the average industry result. Steam is just barely better, but Xbox 360 is significantly better than anyone else. Part of this is the bigger loss from the 360 at the first milestone, but the stronger hold throughout the game for the 360 as well. Overall, GTA 5 is doing well. Finally, to get a feel for how the completionist treated this game, the rare milestone 5 chosen for GTA 5 is called Career Criminal. 
This milestone can be achieved if the player completes all 69 story missions, the five Lester assassination missions, a good amount of Stranger and Freaks missions, perform 14 random events, and a very large amount of collection efforts and side challenges. For Steam, we see that 5.7% of players actually accomplished this. On PS3, 1% did it, and on Xbox 360, we had 1.5% that achieved this. Now let's see the full picture. Here are the raw milestones for GTA 5 with the industry averages in gray for comparison purposes. Let's get into it. Highlights for this view are that even though the Steam version of GTA 5 is over a year and a half older than the PS3 or Xbox 360 version, their curves throughout are fairly close together, which implies that even over the course of that much time, players played it the same no matter the platform. We will see if that holds for re-releases of the game a bit later, but for now the initial releases for each platform look very similar. The second highlight I want to point out is starting at Milestone 2, where the slope for player retention flattens quite a bit. There are 50 missions between Milestone 2 and Milestone 4, and we see only about a 20% drop in players. Now compare that to just Milestone 1, where we lose around 20% just by the second mission, and you can get a feel for how things really changed over time. The final highlight is that Steam is highly dominant at Milestone 5. The consoles never really went after endgame content like PC players did for GTA 5. So this is our final tally for our milestones, but now let's see how the game stacks up against all other games in our database and find out if anyone truly played GTA 5. We use Milestone 4 as our ultimate ranking target. Here are the results for each platform for Milestone 4 once again. It's time to reveal the final rank GTA 5 has in our database. Here we go. Steam is a 6 out of 10, PS3 earned a 7, and 360 also earned a 7. So on 7th generation consoles, GTA 5 was played by a decent amount of people. GTA 5 on Steam had an above average amount of gamers completed. So while these results are certainly not bad, they don't seem to match the reviews, awards, and hype that GTA 5 received. So those are the industry rankings, but our database is able to give us other comparisons as well. Let's break it down. Here we can show the breakdown for GTA 5 across class, genre, review score, and game length. Please keep in mind that because we are comparing data across smaller subsets, the statistical power of these rankings are weaker than our overall industry ranking. Starting off with class comparison, GTA 5 is a AAA game. So ranking it compared to all other AAA contemporaries, we see that the results are weaker. Steam drops two ranks and goes below average. Both consoles drop a rank to six. This shows very clearly that gamers played GTA 5 less than other AAA titles. How about genre? We have classified GTA 5 as an action-adventure game. Compared to other games in that genre, we see again that it shows as slightly weaker with both PS3 and Steam dropping a rank. Next is ranking based on reviews. The scores for GTA 5 put it in the category with games that have scored in the 90s for OpenCritic. Here the results are a bit confusing at first, as you see Steam drop a rank, but Xbox rise a rank. This is because of the smaller subset of 90 ranked games in our database, and thus implies that GTA 5 did about the same, but with more spread. Lastly is ranking based on average game completion length. GTA is in the 25 to 50 hours range. Rankings compared to similar length games has a slight reduction with Steam and PS3 dropping a rank compared to the industry. Overall, we see that GTA 5 never performed better in any of the breakdowns, but usually weaker. There's no hidden strength in any subcategory. All right, it's time to reveal the results for our game of better or worse. So let's recap. GTA 5 is up against Sonic Origins, Forza Motorsport, and Dead Island 2. Last chance to make your choices. Which ones are GTA 5 ranked better than or worse than? And the results are that GTA 5 player retention was better than Forza Motorsport, but worse than Sonic Origins and worse than Dead Island 2. Are you surprised? I certainly was. Now let's see if we can tease out some other observations by looking at these results in different ways. It's time for the deep dive. Let's start with progressive player loss. Each group shows how many total players have stopped playing the game at that particular milestone. Here we see the large drop at Milestone 2 very clearly, but you can also clearly see that after Milestone 2 through to Milestone 4, there's a good hold on players from that point on. Moving on, we can look at Milestone player retention. This calculation only takes into account the player population loss as a percentage compared to the previous milestone. We see the initial drop with the 360 dropping the most, but then at Milestone 2, the 360 holds on the most, and Steam drops the most by a percentage. You can also see in this graph that at Milestone 5, Steam does much, much better than the consoles for late game completion. And how about completionists? How do the rarest milestones perform on the different platforms? 
No surprise that Steam dominates this graph. Xbox is second, which almost never happens with modern Xbox results, so it's fun to see. Finally, we check on early versus late game retention. When you read a chart like this, the best performers are further away from the center of the circle. Early game, the consoles outperform Steam by a bit. End game loss is doing very well for all the platforms. And completionist loss shows the large separation that Steam has created compared to the consoles. Let's take one final look at all the platforms and their Milestone 4 results, but this time we show the full percent rank within our database. This is to give you a detailed view of how the rankings played out. Use this data as you will. Now is the time I would normally wrap this video up, but GTA 5 provides us with a chance to look at how gamers treated a game over three distinct generations of consoles. And we also need to take into account what the impact of GTA Online is. This is where things get super interesting. First up is PlayStation. Here's a graph showing the differences for PS3, PS4, and PS5 for the milestones we've already gone over before. So PS3 is the standard bearer, and you can see the drop from PS3 to PS4. Just one year separates these releases, and the PS4 version came out before Steam. If you're wondering the final rank for PS4 in our database, GTA 5 has a 4 out of 10. But the bigger story is PS5. 65% of players on PS5 never finished the second mission in the game, and only 6.3% of players ever completed the story. GTA 5 on PS5 has a rank of 1 in our database. Almost no one played it on PS5. Now we can talk about why this might be, but first, let's look at Xbox as well. Here is a graph showing the differences for Xbox 360, Xbox One, and Xbox Series. Xbox 360 is just as strong as we've showed you before, but you see that Xbox One has a large drop off and the Xbox Series just falls off a cliff at the start. Xbox One ends with a rank of just three in our database and Xbox Series actually ends with a rank of zero. Absolutely no one played GTA 5 on Xbox Series platform. So what we see is a dramatic drop over generations of the percentage of players that are playing and finishing the GTA 5 campaign. But what you might not realize is that seeing these differences in generations is fairly equivalent to a time-based graph. What does that mean? Well, if we could timestamp when players earn their milestones, we could see if there's actually a drop-off or increase in how players are playing a particular game. We could see if there was a resurgence in a game or only people who played it at launch finished it, things like that. What we can do here is actually see how players changed how they interacted with GTA 5 over three distinct time periods. Steam is unique in that we really just see all that time period averaged into one data point, so Steam isn't too relevant to this discussion. So going back to the Xbox graph we have up here, we can see that Gen 7 consoles played the story, but Gen 8 consoles played it significantly less, and Gen 9 consoles barely played it at all. And when developers and publishers see data like that, it certainly paints them a picture of the importance of additional story content. I know I would question the value of doing story-based DLC considering these numbers. But old bit you say, anything GTA will sell like crazy, and normally I would agree with you. However, what if you are making money in another area? An area that is cheaper to maintain and easier to make money in, and then maybe it's a much harder decision than you think. Let's see how GTA Online has done. So we have four milestones we're going to use to gauge online progress in GTA Online. We have Off the Plane which is where a player finishes the online tutorial and introduction. 3-Bit Gangster, which is just getting your avatar to level 25. Making Moves, which is getting to level 50. And finally, Above the Law, which is getting to level 100. So let's look at this pretty busy graph. What this is showing you is all seven platforms and the results for these online milestones. I don't want to focus on any specific values just yet, but the overall trends. So each group from left to right is older to newer platforms, but with Steam fully to the right. So if you look at the first group for Off the Plane, it goes PS3, then 360, PS4, Xbox One, PS5, Xbox Series, and finally Steam. It does this for each milestone group. A couple of things to really notice in this graph. First is that PS3 is a bit of an aberration as it ranks really high for GTA 5 online results. It was a big game on that platform for sure. But aside from PS3, you see an increase over the generations of player engagement in the GTA Online mode, where we saw less engagement over the generations for the story mode. And while this might seem natural as online continues to get content and the story doesn't, we see that in the current generation hardly anyone is actually engaging with the story of GTA 5, 
and the opposite is happening for the online mode. You can also see that while there is a predictable drop off in players in the online mode as you look at later leveling milestones, the increase in player retention over the generation stays intact even at the high mark of the above the law milestone for level 100. One last thing we can compare is how the actual player percentage for milestone 4 achievement compares to online leveling achievements. So here, the gray bar represents the Milestone 4 results for each platform we've seen before, and the colored lines are online progress milestones. Red for level 25, yellow for level 50, and green for level 100. The best way to read this chart is by looking at the top of each gray bar and comparing that to where the colored lines show up on the vertical axis. For example, Steam all the way to the right on the graph shows that GTA 5 is nearly the same player retention percentage that finished the story mode as did actually reach level 100 in GTA Online. And players that play the online mode are far more likely to continue to pay for content, thus making Rockstar far more money in the long run than story content. But look at modern consoles like PS5 and Xbox Series. The online milestones are dwarfing the story milestones on modern consoles. That wasn't the case when you look back at the older generations. The way players consume gaming today, at least in the case of GTA 5, has vastly changed. Okay, I think we can wrap this up. So what are our major takeaways from all the data? There's a lot to talk about with GTA 5. First off are the very solid results for the seventh generation consoles. PS3 and 360 ranked as sevens in our database and Steam ranked six. While not great, it's still a solid result. But I think that where I struggle is that we have a crazy high reviewed game, won countless awards and is revered by many, but we aren't seeing it dominate. And that's where I think the disconnect is for me. You can sell 200 million copies, and yes, a decent amount of people do finish your game. But when you see scores and awards the likes of what GTA 5 received, I do feel like the results in how players finish the game should match, and in this case, they didn't quite get there. But unfortunately, it gets worse, because if we look at the outcome on modern consoles, we see that PS5 is ranked only as a 1, and Xbox Series never goes past 0. Hardly anyone played GTA 5 on modern consoles. Now this might be because people bought it again, booted it up, realized it looked a little prettier, but it was the same game, so decided to stop. But it could be something else, and it rhymes with Bonline. We also saw that even if we do a breakdown and look at just games in GTA 5 genre or class, that GTA 5's results are actually weaker, not stronger. That certainly came as a surprise to me as I expected this game to be a complete juggernaut against other games, as they certainly are with sales. And we do need to go back to the elephant in the room where it does look like GTA Online is consuming everything over time. All the data shows story consumption declining and online consumption rapidly increasing. Now does this mean that we won't get a story in GTA 6? Of course not, but I do think it makes it much more unlikely that we will ever see story DLC like we did in past GTA games. There was none for GTA 5, and I think the online mode is the reason, and I certainly believe that it's likely the plan for GTA 6, although only time will tell. Grand Theft Auto 5 released a universal acclaim from critics, and over the many years it has been available and re-released on newer console platforms, it has sold over 200 million copies. It's hard to fathom anything but the next GTA game unseating it in terms of dominance. It won many Game of the Year awards and countless awards in other categories as well. But all of that doesn't change the fact that it was actually played through to the end by only a bit more than the average game out there. That flies in the face of traditional game think, but that's what we do here. We remove the hype and the sales and the feelings about the game and get down into the weeds to see what's really happening. That doesn't mean GTA 5 is a letdown. It just means that there's a lot of room for improvement in the next game, and we won't have to wait long to see if Rockstar learned from what happened with GTA 5. I'm not expecting massive differences, but hopefully the game can be enhanced to keep more players playing and experiencing the detailed, crazy world that Rockstar creates. And that's a wrap. Hopefully you all found this data interesting and we all learned a little bit more about our gaming world today and Grand Theft Auto V in particular. Thank you all again for your support. This 500 subscriber special was fun and I hope you had fun watching it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to do all the YouTube support stuff. Grant us a like and a sub if you haven't already. I'd love to read any comments you have down below. What conclusions do you all take from this data? And of course, feel free to suggest the next game we should look at to determine if anyone played it. Until then, take care of yourself and each other.